Hey Rebels, today's episode is all about one of my favorite things in the world, Southern cooking. Warren Montgomery runs the Big Easy Kitchen, serving up mouthwatering Louisiana style cuisine. It's something I think has been sorely lacking in the Saskatchewan culinary scene. On this week's episode, I'm going to ask him all about crawfish boils and the secret to his catfish sandwich. So let's get into it. Warren, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Sorry it took so long to get you on the show, man. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'm, I'm just I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Today, we're going to be jumping into a beer, but I really wanted to start off with, tell me about Big Easy Kitchen. How'd you get started? Um, the Big Easy Kitchen, um, it's has always been my passion to be a business owner. I uh, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, um, and living here for the last couple, living for the last nine years, I have friends from the states and just cooking for friends and family and one day i just felt like this was something that people here would appreciate it's unique it's different um and people here that i'm from new orleans that's first thing they asked me about is my food is the food from new orleans so i figure um that's always a talking point um for my background so i figure why not bring that here so how'd you get started um cooking at home um, cooking for family and friends, um, just missing those dishes that I had growing up as a kid and just finding, trying to find local ingredients to make it and um, just able to find local ingredients that I could just make certain dishes like gumbo, red beans and rice and things like that, just the basic ones that I grew up on and having friends from back home eating it and missing it too as well. Um, and it just kind of grew from that. What is your signature dish? Gumbo, chicken and sausage gumbo. Um, that is my um, go-to uh, meal. I can eat it year-round. Um, it's one of the dishes that everyone can appreciate, um, whether you um, don't like seafood or not. It touches everybody's palate. Um, chicken sausage, great flavor. It has just enough spice. It's filling. You can eat it year-round. You know, it's good in the winter time, but it's good year-round. So. It's an all-purpose uh, meal. It kind of just sticks to your ribs, right? Definitely. Yep. It's a it's a one of those meals that you just want to have when you just want to sit down and eat a hearty meal with with a punch, with a um, pack full of flavor. That's it. Would you describe it as something that's like savory, spicy? It's not very sweet, is it? Uh, no. It's it's a savory, spicy um, dish. Um, you can make it as spicy as you like, um, or um, you know, most people, were growing up, we had it to where it was just spicy enough to where you can add hot sauce. Um, myself, um, I like it with a little bit of hot sauce over the rice, just for the, the extra punch. But that's that's just me personally. Um, you can eat gumbo. Um, traditionally, people back home eat gumbo with potato salad as well. Um, you have the, the potato salad, the salty and the, the cold from the potato salad. And then when you mix it with the hot and the spicy from the gumbo, it gives it a really great mix and flavor. But that's really, really traditional New Orleans people. I'm not that traditional. I, I keep it simple with the rice and the gumbo, not so much the potato salad. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there because my wife's American. Okay. And when she talks about potato salad, she means something entirely different from what I grew up with, which was basically just a gross mayonnaise bomb. Yeah. She's talking about something else. So I want to clarify what you mean by potato salad. So for me, it's um, potatoes that's, that's been cooked, partially partially cut up, um, not huge chunks, because I've seen it here as huge chunks, which is mayo. But we have mustard and pickle relish and eggs and um, paprika and salt and pepper. So it's, it's a eucopia of different flavors in one dish. So yeah, it's it's nothing like um, here. Here it's, it's just potatoes with uh, mayo. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think that's a crime against potatoes. <laughs> it is. It's, it's just wrong. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you. I had that that catfish sandwich. Okay. And I think I ate it in less than sixty seconds. I just I couldn't get enough of it. What what do you do to them make that sandwich? Honestly, a lot of my dishes they're just it's it's simple. Um, so I, I do a buttermilk bath, um, and I, my, my buttermilk is seasoned. So everything that I do has layers of seasoning into it. So the, the buttermilk is seasoned, even though it already has flavor. 
um, it's seasoned and it sits in the buttermilk until it's ready to you. So normally, about a 24 hour soak in the buttermilk with seasoning and um, lightly floured and seasoned. Like, like I said, it's very simple. Um, I don't believe in heavy coating because it takes away from the fish itself. Um, but I do believe in layering my flavor. So every part, of, every step of the process, there's some seasoning in the process. One of the things I was thinking about when I was talking with you earlier was there's got to be a reason this guy is going back to his childhood. You know, there's got to be a dish that you bite into and it takes you back to maybe mom or grandma's cooking. Uh, which dish is that for you? Honestly, uh, the po' boys. Um, po' boys? The po' boys sandwich. Um, as a kid growing up, we would go to a place called We Never Close in New Orleans. And they would have your hot sausage, um, hamburger, catfish, shrimp, po' boy. And my favorite was a hot sausage with cheese on it. And it was a place that you can go any time of the day or night and get a po' boy. And that's the one thing that if I miss about food in New Orleans, it's the po' boys and we never close. Um, and as I got older, you, you go out, you leave, you leave a party with your friends, and you go to We, we Never Close and get a, a, a full long um, po' boy house sausage sandwich. With uh, and back home, we, it's called Mr. Big, a Big Shot drinks, and I'll get a pineapple Big Shot with a, a po' boy sandwich. And doesn't matter the time of the day, it would always hit the spot. So that's the one thing that I always, that's my go-to dish if I could have it every day. Outside of gumbo, a hot sausage sandwich, po' boy, every time. It just reminds you of hanging out with the boys or just hanging out with your family? All the time. We will go get a po' boy and sit around and just savor it. It's honestly like right, like right now, my mouth is just wet right now thinking about it. That's how much I love po' boys. It's just, it's, it's an all-purpose, all-purpose food. You can eat it breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It's just all-purpose. Well, today I picked out a beer that I thought would be – it would play nice okay. with your food. I would figure if you're going to be eating some soul food, you want some. You're going to be eating some spicy food, yes. so you want either a really aggressive beer or a gentle beer to cool you off. Okay. So, let's get into it. I'll I'll let you do the honors of pouring, and I'll kind of explain it while okay. you pour it. So this beer is actually by Nine Mile Brewing. They're located in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and this is their English Pale Ale. It's five point two percent. And my theory is it's going to be easy drinking. I haven't had it before, but that's my guess. So Warren's just filling up a couple glasses here. Uh, real gentlemanly pour. Okay. So cheers. Cheers, sir. Oh, that's good. I like that. It, it reminds me of a, like a really classic, traditional English pale ale. Really yes. malty, sweet aroma. The head is really rocky and fluffy. What do you think? Honestly, it's this will go really good with pretty much any one of my dishes. Um, it's it's light enough to where if you have a, a bit of spice, it would instantly uh, cool off your palate and 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 make it fresh again to have more food. Like it would clean off your palate. So when you have more of it, it would yeah. It's honestly I'm blown away with it because um, it's hard to to pair beers. With spicy food, it's just one of those tricky things. Um, like you said, if, if it's too strong, then it, it, it increases the heat of the food. And if it's too light, then it's not enough to kind of cool your palate. But this beer right here, I would I would pair it with most of my dishes. Nice. Yeah. One of the things I think people forget is they're used to drinking really, really light. you got to pound it really cold lagers. Mm -hmm. But then you get a beer like this. It's a little more body. It's a yes. little fuller, a little richer. Um, it lingers and it doesn't vanish. And I think that's what can complement. Definitely. And, and you know what? And I always tell people about Cajun food. It's one of those things that the heat can be adjusted to your um, taste. Um, people assume Cajun is, is automatically spicy and burn your mouth. Um, Cajun is more flavor. Um, you should always taste the flavors of the dish first. Then on the very back end of it, you should feel the heat. And with that, this beer in particular would definitely pair very well with most of the dishes that I make because you, you can have the flavors of the dish on, on your palate up front and towards the back of it, you feel that, that little bit of heat. And this beer would actually, you know, complement the heat and the flavors 
perfectly. So thumbs up? Definitely thumbs up. I would actually uh, buy me a few cases of these to bring home. Definitely. Yes. Nice. There you go. Chef thinks it'll go good well with his food. <laughs> yes. So you were talking about heat there. Yes. What is your philosophy? What is your theory? You touched on it a bit. Um, for me, um, heat should be in, in levels, in, in stages. Um, I've never been one to your first bite should be burning your mouth. Um, unless that dish is made for that, like uh, a hot sauce sandwich. Hot sauce sandwiches, they are meant to be hot automatically based on the name hot sausage. Um, but most of the dishes that I prepare or that's made in New Orleans aren't made to burn your mouth. They're, they're made to have flavor and slowly build, up, build the heat up to the very end of it to enable you to have something to drink, to cool it off, or to just refresh your palate for more, for more food. Um, the big misconception of Cajun food, and I'm, I'm not sure where it came from, but they think that Cajun food is an instant spicy burn in your mouth. And I tell people if that's what you get, then it's done incorrectly. It should never ever burn your mouth um, unless that particular dish is built that way, which there's very few dishes in New Orleans that are built to burn your mouth or be heat initially. It's a slow, gradual um, raise to the heat. Um, so that's one of the things I, I try to tell people that you can, you can um, it's a slow, gradual raise to heat. Now you can always increase heat. You can always add hot sauce to it because there are some people who prefer heat and that's fine and well, but um, I tell people to try it first. You know, take a, take, take a few bites first to gauge the heat, and then you can always add um, to it. My wife's always complaining that there hasn't been an opportunity to get good Cajun food here. When I went and visited her in the States, we went to this restaurant uh, called Buzzard Billy's, okay. and they had amazing hush puppies. And what you're, what you're saying really resonates with me because I don't remember it being scorch your mouth off hot until I got to like andouille sausage. Yes. And then that was like, okay, I'm gonna hurt my ring tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and again, andouille sausage, is, that's, again, that's one of those uh, meat, one of those dishes that has a natural heat. So most times, like my gumbo, my gumbo has andouille sausage in it. So, init so initially when I make gumbo with andouille sausage, it's never made to be spicy because the andouille adds, adds, adds its own flavor to it already. already. So it's already spicy um, to start out with. So I always tell people, eat it first, and then um, once you have done dewy and the, the seasons in it, and if you find it still not spicy enough, then add, um, add to it. But undoing sausage is, is already a natural sp um, spicy uh, pork sausage. Deadly. <laughs> yep, it can be. Man, uh, one of the other cool dishes I had was uh, gator. Mm-hmm. And it was like rich and falling apart, and I didn't even know what to expect. But it was kind of like a, a chewy chicken. Yeah, that's that's um, me personally. I'm I'm not, I'm not a huge gator eater, but I will do sausage. Um, I'll, I'll do gator sausage because it still has that, um, and if it's smoked properly, I, I will do gator sausage. Um, but gator does, it is close to chicken. It's a chewy chicken, um, but again, with most most dishes like that. It's all, it's all about how it's prepared and cooked um, to where it can mask that the flavors of the actual animal. So, yeah, it, it is a, a different, uh, unique meat to uh, try. So one of the things I saw you guys posting about, and I've never done, but I've always wanted to try, was a crawfish boil. Can yes. You tell me what that is. So um, I'll, I'll tell you the, the background of, of a crawfish boil. So um, a crawfish ball back in New Orleans is pretty much a gathering of family and friends in the summertime. Um, you can do it as a family. You can do it by yourself. Um, you can go to a local corner store in New Orleans and get a bag of crawfish for 3 or $4 and go sit at a bench on the lake and have crawfish by yourself. Um, or you can get family and friends, sit around a table and put a big pot of crawfish on the table and just feast and talk and just hang out. So a crawfish bowl is usually a gathering of family and friends. Um, now, um, a crawfish bowl is different from region to region. Um, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mississippi, Alabama, they all do the crawfish bowl similarly different. Um, for myself growing up, my dad, we used turkey necks 
in his in his crawfish bowl. So he would do crawfish, shrimp, turkey necks, corn, sausage, um, in his in his boils. Um, I've been to some where they use um, just sausage. Um, I've seen people who use um, onions, garlic, celery, uh, puree. Myself, I do whole onions and celery and garlic in mine. Um, so it's just different from region to region, but it's just simply a gathering of family and friends, sitting around, talking, having a good time. Um, and having just a beer? Having a beer. And just it's, it's just a laid back family gathering. There's no rush to it. Um, you just take it easy and just have a really good time. So, yeah. And people can get... Uh, you to cater a crawfish boil for them? Yes. So um, if you have 10 or more people, I come to your home. I set up. I cook wherever you want me to cook it, whether it's a backyard, a garage. Um, and you can watch me do it from start to finish. Um, I tell stories. Um, I'll, sh- I'll show you how to eat crawfish properly. Um, what do people do? <laughs> how do they eat it improperly? Um, so the saying is called pinch the tail, suck the head. Um, so you so you pinch the tail off the crawfish, take the meat out of the tail, and then you suck the head of the crawfish. Um, where there's a lot of the flavors that people, when I say that, their face looks like yours. It kind of gets scrunched up and confused. But a lot of the flavor is in the head when you suck. You're sucking out the juice that's been sitting, the broth, that's been sitting in for the last hour, two hours. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot of the flavor, a lot of the spices in the head of the crawfish. It's really good. I, it, it sounds it sounds odd and strange, but once people try it, they hands down love it, and they they do it. They come back and do it again and again. Um, but it's it's like I said, a crawfish boil. It's it's not to be rushed. The process is slow and steady, and you sit around, have beers, you drink, you socialize, you catch up with old family and friends, and then once it's all ready, you put it on the table. And you just take your time and eat it. You, again, you talk, you, you socialize, you, re, you know, reunite with family and friends. Um, and same here, you know, and with myself, I do it year round. I can do it, I can do it right now. Uh, most people who have heated garages, I go inside your garage, set up, and people stand around me while I do it and they ask me questions. And it's fun, it's good to tell them about um, my culture and, and my background. So um, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, it's unique to New Orleans. So um, when I'm able to spread that culture, it makes me happy. <laughs> What's one thing that people need to know about New Orleans that maybe they, they don't know yet? People from New Orleans, we, we take everything really slow. We don't, we don't, we don't rush. Um, that's why it's called a big easy. Everything moves um, at, at your pace. So whatever your pace is, that's what you move at. Um, you know, the food, everything is low and slow. Um, there's no rush. Red beans and rice, gumbo. Um, every, everything is, is, is a process. Um, red beans and rice, it's an all-day process. Gumbo, um, to do a proper gumbo, just to make the base, which is called a roux, it's 45 minutes, just to make a proper roux. And then you let it cook for another two hours. So everything is just slow and easy. Um, we don't like to rush a whole lot. Um, in New Orleans, um, and if we're rushing, we're not happy about it at all. So that's that's the biggest thing about New Orleans. And people don't. It's not a hustle bustle city. Um, even though we are a major city, we 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 just take our time. It's about our pace, and just enjoying the moment, enjoying the time. So if people want to bring that feeling, that big easy feeling to them, how can they get a hold of you to get you to do catering or what you do? Um, I'm on f- Facebook. Um, it's Big Easy Kitchen on Facebook, also on Instagram, which is Big Easy Kitchen 03 on Instagram. Um, and that's the best way to reach me. You can DM, DM me on Instagram and message me on Facebook. Um, and like I do small caterings, the crawfish boils. Um, I do pop-ups. I'm, I'm pretty, um, I'm all over the place. Whatever you want me to do, I can do. Come into your home and do a meal of, of, um, for, your, for guests of parties and stuff. So whatever you want me to do, we can talk about it and I can cater. And, and create a, a dish for your party or your group of friends. My mouth is watering, man. My yeah. stomach's trembling. <laughs> <laughs> Warren, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Thank you. Rebels, thanks for listening today. I'm going to include links in the show notes so you can find more about Warren and the Big Easy Kitchen. 
As you know, this show was never intended to be a one-way conversation. You've given me something precious, your time, and what you have to say is important too. If you'd like to join the conversation and ask our guests more questions or leave comments about an episode, join us on our brand new Facebook group page. It's just called the Rebellion Bring Podcast. It's located right on Facebook. And share your thoughts with us. Let us know what you think. As always, if you want to find the latest news about Rebellion Bring, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Untapped. Thank you for joining the Rebellion.